All right, Chris Ballas, thank you so much for joining us. I guess we'll start with the biggest news of the day, really, in Josh Gaddis deciding to leave Michigan and take the, the offensive coordinator position at Miami. What's the significance of Michigan losing him? Yeah, two things. Number one, it's a lateral move, right? So everybody's thinking, what's going on here? And is Jim Harbaugh, after flirting with the Minnesota Vikings, uh, going to be able to keep his staff together? And what does this mean? Is it true that these guys are waffling behind the scenes? And clearly it is. And I don't know if you saw the tweet. Uh, I think it was Tom Van Heron from ESPN. Josh Gaddis sent a tweet to his players or a, an email to his players saying that, wow, um, you know, the administration wasn't what I thought it was. And don't be somewhere where you're not wanted. So uh, it's very interesting to see how he went out, number one. Number two, how much more damage control Jim Harbaugh is going to have to do to keep this staff together and get that trust back. Because that trust between the staff was really one of the big reasons, Marley, that this season, last season was so great. And now Harbaugh has to replace two coordinator positions how difficult is that? And what does that do for maybe the momentum of the program? Yeah, that's fair. And you know, Matt Weiss on staff is the quarterback's coach. He brought him over from Baltimore where he coached for his brother, John, and he was always kind of thought to be the next guy in line. So I think they'll move him up. Uh, they're looking at defensive coordinators now, like Larry Foote, who's in the NFL with Tampa Bay, played at Michigan. We've heard he's probably going to stay in the NFL. So now you look at a guy like Jesse Minter, who also coached at Baltimore and is now at Vanderbilt, is familiar with the college game. So I think those are two areas he's going to look. But right now, in my opinion, the most important thing is he's got to solidify the guys he's got on staff now, the Mike Hartz, the running backs coach, and Sharon Moore, who did an outstanding job as co-coordinator and on the offensive line. So he's really got to rebuild those relationships first before he makes those hires. Yeah. Was Josh Gaddis one of the, the front runners for the, the Michigan head coaching job? It had Harbaugh left to, to the pros. That was a rumor, and uh, we confirmed that that was not the case. And in fact, on his way out today, when he said, you know, the administration doesn't believe in you, I think that was kind of a direct shot at, okay, Mike Hart or Sharon Moore were going to be those guys ahead of him. As a matter of fact, uh, people in his circle told us when he emerged as the favorite, he said, you might as well, you know, just flush your money down the toilet. So he kind of knew, in my opinion, and so this has been festering for a while. Yeah, and Harbaugh just returning to the program, I don't think that was the expected outcome at all. Absolutely not. In fact, we wrote a report on Tuesday and unfortunately got picked up nationally. Uh, with, And it was kind of taken out of context. What we said was that he was planning on going up there to be the Minnesota Vikings head coach and sign a contract. And that's exactly why he went up there. In fact, speaking to three people who talked to him that day, that was his plan. And in fact, Minnesota, was preparing to announce him and they had in fact uh, a camera crew and, and things like that uh, ready you know like, like you do when you interview your coaches and maybe put something out there on social media so they both wanted each other and in fact Harbaugh probably thought it was a formality the interview did not go well and so he's back in Ann Arbor. Yeah so that him returning to Michigan is an indication that the Vikings interview did not go well is there anything else you know about why maybe just things went went south? Yeah, and speaking to people up there and members of the Detroit News, some of my colleagues and people who were actually close to it, they said it just didn't prove to be a good fit and that some of the things he said might go over better in a college locker room than a professional locker room. And some people even said that they started bringing up his past relationships at San Francisco with the ownership there. Uh, some hard questions. And Jim Harbaugh is a hard guy to keep his attention for that long. Even when we interview him after about 10 minutes or so, he seems to lose interest. So it doesn't surprise me in that respect. What does surprise me in a way is that uh, he's not the head coach there flat out uh, because it seemed like they both wanted each other and it just wasn't a marriage that wasn't meant to be. And now I imagine, you know, I know Michigan fans are excited because he's, he's done good things with the program, but it has to be a little bit awkward when he was so publicly going to interview for another job and then comes back. I'm trying to think of myself as a player or a coach for that program, how odd it must be. Hey, you know, maybe you, did you not want to, to coach us for another year? Maybe, you know, guys leave for the transfer portal. I don't know. Do you see anything of that and, and the ball kind of rolling it in another direction with that? Yeah, it's a great question. And we've talked to players' dads. He had a meeting with his players the other day and it went well. They were all excited to have him back. And, you know, he said, you know, you can spin it all, any way you want to if you're Jim Harbaugh and say, hey, 
Uh, you know, and he said with Mitch Album in the Detroit Free Press, I was went up there basically to take a job. He was had that Super Bowl itch, but he came back and told his kids, I'm all in. They were really excited about it. It's really the staff right now because some of them were helping him prepare for that interview in Minnesota and he was going to take them with him. And then the other guys were like, well, why weren't you going to take me? Right. So that chemistry that they had, Marley, uh, that's going to be something that he has to rebuild. And to me, that is the biggest part of the offseason for him right now. Can that be detrimental to the program going forward? Do you think they, they might not be able to build off, you know, the good season that they had and things might, you know, might hit a learning curve in that sense yeah. this season? Fair question. And I think, yes, I think Mike Hart, uh, as a matter of fact, Angelique Shingelis from the Detroit News, she said today NFL teams are looking at him now. And uh, so you're going to have to do some damage control here. Sharon Moore is a, an elite coach, offensive line coach, co-coordinator. Steve Klingscale came from Kentucky last year as the defensive backs coach, did an outstanding job, was supposed to be co-defensive coordinator this year. So these guys are all wondering, in my opinion, you know, what is it worth it? You know, is this, I wouldn't call it a circus, but, you know, this flirtation with the NFL and everything, the fallout since, these guys have to decide what's best for their future. Do you think this is the last time that Jim Harbaugh could would consider a, a return to the pros? Yeah, it's another great question. And we've been talking about that, me and my colleagues and me, and uh, I don't know that it is. But at the same time, is the NFL going to take another chance on Jim Harbaugh after this? I think that's the biggest question now going forward. Do you think Michigan will try to rewrite a contract to get him to stay and maybe build more sustainability with the program? I think if anything, they might include a little higher buyout, right? And prove to us that you're here for the long haul, like you say you are, because those were his comments when he came back that I'm here for good now. And as long as Ward Manuel, Michigan's athletic director wants me. So, but the proof is in the pudding, right? And the contract. So I think the sooner they get that deal done though, and he signs and they can announce it and get that goodwill back to, for the program, the better. Now of all days to go and interview with the Vikings, he picks the first day of the, the regular signing period. I know that they had already locked up most of their recruits during the early signing period, but have you noticed any kind of recruiting fallout in that sense um, when he decided to, to go and interview? Yeah, there were a few kids that had signed early that were actually in tears. Kenneth Grant, big defensive lineman from the Midwest, and they were really like, okay, what am I doing now? They've all, for the most part, with the exception of one or two, have really solidified their commitments and said they're very grateful that Jim Harbaugh is back. What it does for the program going forward is the big question. They weren't going to sign anybody on the late signing day anyway. Still, the optics aren't great, uh, right? You're going on signing day. And in the two days before signing day, when you could be looking for maybe some late additions to your class, you're preparing for an interview with the, with the Minnesota Vikings. So it doesn't look good. But there are still some guys that are in on, uh, big offensive lineman from out west, Connerly, who is considering, he's making a decision in March, still considering Michigan after the fact. I think we're going to find out in the 2023 class coming up how much this really did affect recruiting.